Hi resellers, it's Caitlin here. Um, I am coming at you without a mic. I've tried to make it work, but you know, I'm new to this and it ain't working. Today, I thought I would share with you guys a recap of my first year reselling. So, you probably don't know, but I started reselling back in February of 2022. So, in about a month, it will complete my first year of reselling. And I thought I'd share with you guys my stats and what I'm averaging, what I'm making each month, and how much time I'm putting into it. So, if you're thinking about getting into reselling, I will give you an overview of my first year and hopefully you will gain knowledge of with how much time you put in it, put in it, how much you could possibly make starting out, which it varies because everybody sells different things and whatnot. And honestly, with three small kids, sometimes four when we have my um, bonus daughter, it's crazy around here and I really cannot dedicate too much time into my reselling business. I'm doing good if I just package what I got and get it out the door and, you know, keep customers happy. That's what, all I'm trying to juggle right now. When the kids go get back into school, which they're out for winter breaks, so I've literally spent no time other than packaging and shipping my items like the past two weeks. You know, I'll crunch down and do a little bit better in the mornings whenever I have um, a few hours. I have a few hours every morning because my youngest, she is three and she goes to like a, a church school, which is only a couple hours in the morning. So, I'm pitched for time and this is what I made with, with hardly putting in any time. And I will say my only goal this year was to help out because of inflation. I wanted to help my husband. I wanted to, um, you know, groceries are going up so high. And I really just wanted to pay a grocery bill. And I think on a, I did so on a budget. And I think I, I did that with what I made. So, um, I'll go over my total sales. And if you see me looking over this way, it's because I'm looking at my computer. Um, total sales this year, before anything's taken out, um, was $13,484. eBay collected $739.34 out of that for eBay fees. Um, the selling costs, which means shipping, shipping, I guess. Just that, maybe? Yeah, shipping. Okay, so shipping cost me $4,957, which sounds like a lot, but I charge shipping. So, you know, they they behaved for that when they were getting their items. The buyer did. Um, so my net sales this year was $7,787. I sold $300. And 92 items which averages out my um, my average sale price would have been $34 and 40 cents which that's not bad for average sale price for your first year of course each year as I do this I'm gonna try to make that um, number go up to a um, higher average sale price but for my first year that's not a bad average per item I don't do many auctions. I sold $511 on auction on eBay, and I believe that might have been two items. Uh, what else? Okay, and you know, what's wonderful about this eBay it gives you, oh, oh, sorry, it gives you all your statistics. Okay, so I had 376 buyers. Um, and then I had eight repeat buyers. So I had 368 people that just bought from me once. And then I had eight people come back and buy more items, which to me on eBay, that's good because I don't really sell, I don't sell the same of everything. I sell a variety, like I'm a variety store. I love vintage, I love funky, I love eclectic. 
and it's all just a variety. If I think I can make a dollar on it, I'm gonna make a dollar on it. So, you know, to have repeat buyers in a store like that, but to me, it's wonderful. It means I gave them good service, which makes me happy. All right, so that's my statistics. And um, so then I broke it down to with whenever I took out the fees and all that, what I was making per month. So I made an extra $707 this year per month um, to help out with bills. And that's wonderful. And really, grocery bill. So that was $176 clear each week. Wonderful in my eyes. I think that's great. Because like I said, that's my grocery bill. Now this year, I'm seeing that I can actually do a lot more. If I manage my time better. So I do plan on growing my business. I plan on bringing that average sale price up. Which, what does that mean? It means sourcing better quality items and more of them in my store to bring that average sale price up. And then, you know, being consistent with listing because I'm just not consistent. My favorite thing is sourcing. So I'm sourcing the heck out of all the items and it's getting a mess in my dining room. And I need to start listing. I need to list those items. I need to be more selective about what I'm sourcing, source better items. I do, however, want to get my listings up because I'm just the type, my mindset, my goal with my business is I could um, source and list only high dollar items, but if I do that, my sell through rate is going to go down because that's going to be most of the time a longer tail item. So I like to keep in there a mix of low dollar item, you know, what me nots that aren't expensive because people are going to, you know, buy that before they're buying this $600 rice. They're going to buy the $24 bowl before they buy the $600 base or faster anyways. So, um, I've got a good bit of that in my store right now. It's a lot of low dollar items. And so now as I've gotten, I'm now up to a thousand listings. So to the next thousand I put up, I hope that they're more high dollar. Well, fingers crossed. Well, whenever I create a video next year at this time, we'll see how much I grow. What else? Okay, maybe I share with you guys what I learned in my first year of reselling. What I learned. Okay, first things first, ship priority. I didn't want to set priority mail as the shipping price whenever I started because it kind of ranges $10 to like $27. And I thought that the buyers see 10 to $28, $25 is how much you're going to um, be charged shipping. And I would never click on a listing that ranged like that um, for shipping. I'd just be like, oh, no, no. But I have realized that it will pop up what, what it's going to charge them where they're at. Like, okay, so if they're back in, I'm over on the East Coast, so if they're on the West Coast, it's going to charge them more. And that's, it's going to show that to them, only them. Okay, so the people over here on the East Coast, look at our nails, y'all. How lovely. On the East Coast, they're going to see $10. And those people are going to be more likely to buy my item. And then the people in California, they're going to buy Jimmy John's. Not Jimmy John's, that's pizza, or sandwich. Um, Betty Lou's over in California. If, you know, the, chip, the shipping is cheaper for her. Just do priority. Because they charge more. You don't get an eBay discount picking parcel select. It looks cheaper for some reason, but it's really not. So you're gonna get a shipping discount on your shipping, which is gonna save you in sh a little bit in shipping material and also the fees that eBay takes, takes out because they take out shipping fees. Just like 
if they charge you 15% on an item, they're charging 15% on that shipping cost too. So um, just keep that in mind. Use priority when you need to. Now, if it's something like super big, super expensive to ship through USPS, choose FedEx or uh, UPS. UPS. Choose UPS or whatever's closest to you because shipping that bigger item is going to be cheaper doing UPS or FedEx. Hold on, Charlie's, Charlie's crying. Let me check on her. Okay, I'm back. Um, where was I? That's my dog, George. Say hi, George. Hi, George. How was you? Okay, so, um, oh, okay, so that brought me to my next thing to point out. When you're sourcing, if it is a big item, make sure you're making a bunch of money on it. I like a big breakable item at least. Because I'm going to avoid that as much as possible. Which, of course, when you're sourcing, we, we collect a lot of stuff that we don't care about. And I'm going to find a better way... Or better use for those items rather than just trying to make some money on it and shipping it because that's what I've been doing lately I've just been listing it and I've been listing it for near to nothing and then just charge it on the shipping and it's just a headache it's a headache to ship those items because they cost a lot number one they're a headache to package and then shipping them um, they might break so and then you're risking, you know, you get some crazy loon that doesn't realize that, look, I packaged the item right, but the the USPS van ran, ran the box over or whatever. Whatever happens. A lot of stuff happens. And um, we can't control it all. And it breaks. Well, let's say you only made $10 on that item, and then you're risking a lot done in shipping and for them to come back and give you a bad review. So to me, it's just not worth it. Not not worth shipping it, not worth the headache, not worth the stress. So those big items that are breakable that I'm not gonna want to ship and because they're not bringing me a whole lot, I'm just, I'm gonna donate them to a cause or a local thrift store that I think um, would love to have the merchandise. So, I'm going to quit being stingy and think, well, I'm just going to make something on it. And I'm going to go ahead and give it away. Because, next point, where are you sourcing? I source a lot of times at local auctions just because they're fun. That's my me time. That's where I go to get a break. Mama needs a break sometimes and Daddy lets me go to local auctions now my local auction is once every two weeks um and that's when i go i have one that's my favorite because they have great quality items lots of it and once every two weeks isn't that bad so find where you like to source it might be garage sales it might be online auctions it might be goodwill but Whatever you love to source, make sure that the area you're shopping has it for good and reasonable prices. Like, um, you know, obviously if you're a clothes reseller, you're going to the Goodwill bins because you can get a lot of clothes really cheap. So, um, it just depends on what you're sourcing and what you like to source and you will find that naturally, you know, where you like to go. I hear Charlie Barley again, so I'm going to wrap up my video. I do want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something. If you are wanting to start reselling, don't be afraid to reach out and ask me some questions. I had a lovely friend that helped me get started, and I would have not have made it without her. So, thanks for watching, and might I add, I forgot in my total income for the week of $176.
I got to take out my sourcing fee, what I, what I paid for the item. And I will tell you, I only source things at 10% of what I sell them for. So, take off 10% of 176, and that is what I got. So, thought I needed to include that in here because somebody's going to call me out on it and say, you forgot what you sourced it for. So, there that is. And I am going to go because Charlie is down here playing in the camera stuff. And if you liked my video, I hope you will like and subscribe. Give me a follow, which is a subscribe, and comment something. Comment what you like to source. Comment if you're a reseller. I would love to join the little community that is on YouTube. So, thank you for watching. I shall see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs> oh!